Yo, this hot, this the spot, there it is pod.com We're interviewing the best comedians, so tune in quick and get your ears receiving them We talking about life and life to stream right to you From the microphone right to your home, dude Side note, this might get embarrassing, but no, don't sweat, yo Cause there it is Welcome to the There It Is podcast, the comedy podcast to help you find your inspiration. I'm your host, Jason Farr. Let's do this. Thanks so much for joining us for this pop talk episode. We're going to talk a lot of pop today. We're talking about the Emmys. We're talking about Norm MacDonald and more. I think you're going to enjoy it. We've got brother of the show, Trey, and best friend of the show, Rob to talk those things but real quick i did just upload a video to our youtube page that was conan o'brien's delightfully jackass moments at the emmys this year i referenced his gags in this episode and the next day i said well i can find these clips i'll just post them to the youtube so i did that you can go to youtube.com slash there it is to find that well, let's just get right to it. Here I am with the of the show fellas. All right. Brother of the show and best friend of the show. We are here doing it. Doing it and doing, doing it. it. Doing, doing, doing it, it well. well. Yes. I represent Queens, but Jason lives in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks so much for joining me for this. We're doing a guy's night, I guess. Uh, Justina couldn't make it tonight. But uh, we are going to uh, talk about some pop uh, talk. How are you guys feeling? I'm, I'm feeling pretty poppy right I'm, now. I'm feeling okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, feeling, I'm feeling frozen in this window of life. You'll get that reference later, Jason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to see it when I can download the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can put it in the enhanced version on YouTube. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> whatever was going on. We're going to talk about a few things tonight. As you know from the description, we're going to talk about the Emmys. We're going to talk about what we're looking forward to on television and in film. We're going to talk about the passing of Norm MacDonald. But first, we're going to talk about TV Line because they just did a 15 year anniversary commemoration. For the CW, the CW has been around 15 years. I remember when Fox was the new kid in town, but it's the CW now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they've been around 15 years, so cool for them. And as I mentioned, TV Line did a commemoration for them. It was a bracket. And they took all of the shows, had people vote on it. And then they seated the top, the, the favorite shows uh, onto the bracket. So here is what they ended up with let's just i'll just name all of the shows that made it to the bracket so it's not every show in cw history that made it to the bracket just so that's clear uh in no particular order other than the way i'm reading it it's super 32 shows just to explain it's 32 total shows it's 32 total shows but there were shows in that 15 year history that didn't make it to the bracket that's Mm -hmm. supernatural batwoman nikita riverdale Legends of Tomorrow, Roswell, Jane the Virgin, Rain, Arrow, Ringer, The 100, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, All-American, Heart of Dixie, Gossip Girl, The Secret Circle, Vampire Diaries, 90210, Superman and Lois, Stargirl, iZombie, Everybody Hates Chris, The Flash, Walker, Smallville, Reaper, Legacies, Supergirl, Nancy Drew, The Originals, One Tree Hill, and Life Unexpected. So those were all of the 32 shows that made it to the bracket. Unfortunately, Black Lightning did not from the Arrowverse. It was the one Arrowverse show that didn't make it. Is that correct? Uh, I think it's the only one. I'd have to double check. Yeah, because Legends is But I think it is. Legends is in there, and Batwoman is in there. Superman and Lois, those are newest shows. Uh, Unfortunately... Yeah, that's the Black only... Lightning didn't make it. That's yeah, uh, that's, that's really too one. bad because I really dug that show. Trey did as well. Is that your car? <laughs> it was nice. 
Um, but I think it was the best in terms of consistency over his four year uh, history. It, it's arguably honestly, yeah. the best, arguably the strongest, just because of its consistency. You're right. So let's just, I'm going to briefly just say here are a couple things that got robbed other than Black Lightning. Jane the Virgin, they, they got out sooner than I thought. They were, they got in the Sweet 16, but they didn't get past that. I was I was surprised. Was Gilmore Girls not on that list? Gilmore Girls was mostly the WB. Okay, the only I, yeah, because I was just I was just looking because yeah, it looks like the last season was right. on the CW. Right, right. So they're only guess, counting not, shows that were kind of mostly on or largely okay. on the CW. Yeah, because I was I was about to be like like how did they take <laughs> that's my wife's so, literal favorite show and so yeah. I was like yeah. <laughs> uh, Dude, Riverdale got beat. In the first round, lost to Nikita, which I think was probably an upset. I think that was a surprise since it had so much attention right off the bat there. But um, other than that, really not a lot of big upsets. I was sad that Everybody Hates Chris didn't get past iZombie, but iZombie doesn't seem like a bad show. So maybe it was just a tough matchup. It was a tough matchup. Yeah. How long did like... um... Like Nikita, like how long, how many years was that on air? Was that? I don't even know that show. I think Nikita was on like, it was basically a new version of La Femme Nikita and it was Maggie yeah. Q. Yeah, vaguely remember Maggie that. Maggie Q is the lead. And that was like three seasons. So It was like three seasons. Okay. Because you mm-hmm. do you remember there was a, a USA show that was Nikita? Yeah, that was too? La Femme Nikita. Mm, was, yeah. Uh, I forget that, the, her name. Blonde haired actress. Blonde haired lady. Yeah. yeah. She was, I think she was a, an Australian lady to be an American. But yeah. The, Petra yeah. something maybe. Something I think like you're that. right. Yeah. When the key, I remember seeing stuff about that one, but th- there's so many CW shows. I'm like, Oh yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing something <laughs> about that. Yeah. And gossip girl did not make it to the final four. That makes no sense to me. It, I thought it was going to be arrow. arrow. I, I thought it was going to be arrow, but I thought it was going to be arrow just because of how big of a show it was in the zeitgeist. Blair. Think we can meet tonight? I'd love to. But I'm doing something with Nate tonight. The palace. Eight o'clock? Nate will wait. Spotted on the steps of the Met. An S and B power struggle. We'd we'll probably do a half hour. Did S think she could waltz home and things would be just like they were? Thanks for making the time. You're my best friend. Did B think S would go down without a fight? There's nothing Gossip Girl likes more than a good cat fight. And this could be a classic. But, then, but I voted like, for Arrow because could, I liked it. It, it could but be, I though. Like but I think, like, you know, like, obviously, Gossip Girl ended sooner than Arrow. And maybe it's just more in the zeitgeist and it's superhero and that kind of thing. And it obviously it created literally the Arrowverse. So. Right, right. I I was happy that Arrow, like, if, if I hadn't, if I wasn't looking at a bracket and someone said, we're going to do this, what mm-hmm. shows do you think will be in the final four? Then it would largely be the shows that were in the final four, uh, Supernatural, Vampire Diaries, Smallville, and Arrow. And I would say the championship, the the chap, the matchup for the, the, the final two should be Supernatural and Smallville. I love The Flash. Gossip Girl was such a big show. I think it also is something that would have been in the running for final four. But... Um, and I and I love everybody hates Chris, so I would have liked to have liked to have seen it at least get to the elite eight. Yeah. And Supernatural ended up being the winner, which I think is fair. Yeah, and mm-hmm. su- I think I mean obviously I think that Supernatural. I mean, how many was it? Sixteen seasons. How Fifteen. Many seasons? Sorry, I was off one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Fifteen in a movie. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, that was one of the. That's one of those shows where like, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's still on the air because I mean it's got to mm-hmm. be what. Was that, is it 300 plus episodes or was it just 200 plus? Uh, it's got to um, be above 300. I'd, I'd have to look yeah. to be sure, but I'd imagine it's above 300. It's above, it's yeah. got to be above 300 um, because I think five seasons is usually when someone hits 100 or someone, a show. Hits yeah, because that's when they syndicate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 327 um, episodes. Okay. Oh, blah. And then he's doing a yep. new sh- Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Which, who's doing the new show? Who are you about to run? Walker, to? yeah, uh, Jerry, yeah, Walker, which did actually, make it on there. Yeah, I, last Blackie. night I, I I watched like uh 
two or three episodes of Walker because it, it's on HBO um, uh, Max <laughs> now. And so I watched it and it's not bad. I mean, it's not great, but it's kind of <laughs> like, you know, it was like, it's not you as know, funny as the unintentionally funny as, funny the, as the original. original. Oh my god, when Conan <laughs> used to do the the Walker Texas the, Ranger, the Walker Texas the, Ranger lever, Ranger. yeah. Uh, there, mm. there's the what there was the one clip. Sorry, folks, but there's a one clip with like it was the father from uh uh uh. Oh God! Well, the Wonder Years, and he was trying to tell this kid to jump off a ladder, and he'd catch him, and the kid jumps, and then he steps out of the way, and the kid falls. Oh yeah! For now, we should probably. Jump. Come on! I promise I'll catch you. Come on! You can do it. Jump! That one, and then of course, like everyone talks about the one with um, a young Haley Joel Osment, who's just like they're having this happy moment, and then he just looks up and goes, "Walker tells me I have AIDS." Well, folks, there is one clip from Walker Texas Ranger that we've been holding back on. This is true; we've been afraid to show it, but it's spring cleaning, and I want to test just how good a crowd this is. The one Walker clip we've never shown. Once you see it. You'll understand why. How are you doing, little partner? Fine. And it's a little visitor now. <laughs> well, pardon my French, but uh, I'll be damned. <laughs> Walker told me I had AIDS. I think we should go to commercial. <laughs> no? You wanna be okay? And it's like, what? Who says, <laughs> what? Where did this comment come from? You weren't just talking about your health, even. And now you're talking about having AIDS? It's uh it was a great gag they were doing on the show. Yeah. And uh and uh, we'll we'll reference Conan some more later throughout this yeah. episode. But yeah. Um <laughs> unintentionally funny Walker Texas Ranger. Yeah, so the new Walker is all right. But yeah, but I mean basically that Jared dude, I think what's his last how do you say his last name? Jared Lecky. Pat he I mean is he just like swimming in money? Because I mean, if you have 16, be, 15 yeah, seasons years. of the show, he was yeah. also in the reboot of Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. yeah, he was. And he, he was. started on that show when people really made money from in television. They, there's so yeah. many streaming services now, and they're, yeah. they're they're doing only like eight episodes and stuff like that. You can really make good money if you're on a network that's doing twenty two episodes. In this yeah, and, it, and, it, and it's it's it's, it's on good. TNT constantly. Whenever mm-hmm. I'm in a waiting room, it's like supernatural. <laughs> Natural on. Oh yeah, yeah for it's sure. On TNT yeah. and it's whatever on, else. Yeah. Yeah. All day. And and uh, yeah. Jared, uh, Jason, and I were talking about this in an email. Jared t- uh, tweeted to uh, vote supernatural in this poll. So it and the supernatural yeah. fans are like some of the most. Uh, rabid fans rabid, yeah rabid I was I, I mean, yeah. someone yeah. you know when they go to like dragon con or or uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. comic con and all that stuff there's actually agents for that and so someone who like booked these actors for those sorts of things this was 12 years ago now uh, she was telling me that jared padalecki and jensen ackles made by far the most uh, at any of these conventions because you get appearance fees to go to these. Yeah, things. obviously. Yeah, yeah. And, and so they were getting back then some like, well, I shouldn't probably shouldn't say the number, but they were getting a lot yeah. more than everybody. Else. I, and I would imagine they could fill out Hall H at Comic Con. Yeah. Like, I think. Well, there because, was one year yeah. they had Kansas there with the Impala to play because Carry On Your Wayward Son or is son. like a big song yeah. for the show. Really? Huh. It's, it's a, a classic. classic. Carry On My it's given us a job to do he wants us to pick up where he left off saving people hunting things Carry on my- Two are all I've got, but I guess we are stronger as a family. Don't you cry no more. Don't you cry no more. Don't you cry no more. Carry on. I love this.
this song. So they yeah. they actually had this surprise concert where they played that song. And I think that was at Hall H. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, and, but so I wasn't surprised when I, when I saw that at one, I'm just, I just, I'm utterly shocked because I just think about like Gossip Girl and the impact it had. And I mean, all of, you know, the main, you know, main people on that show have kind of gone on to mm-hmm. more success as well. That it was lively just, in particular. Yeah. And yeah. Absolutely. To get to marry Ryan Reynolds. Oof, what a lucky girl. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, but Katie Cat, th- that's one of the brackets where you had an actor who who won no matter what, because mm-hmm. Katie Cassidy was in Gossip Girl before she was in Arrow. Yeah, Jensen Ackles was in Smallville before he was in Supernatural. Mm-hmm. So these were the ones who won no matter what. And Jensen Ackles was also on uh, Days of Our Lives before. Yeah, Eric Brady, Sammy's twin brother. That's right. That's right. And but yeah, but no, but they yeah, like I. Yeah, Jared was uh, was on was Dean on on Gilmore Girls. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, and TV Line mentioned that he is though he is the real winner because he was on both. Yeah, yeah. and there's a big debate about who she should end up with, and like she obviously is probably going to end up with Milo. Um, if you saw like the new series on Netflix, my wife makes me watch Gilmore Girls, guys. Okay, <laughs> so oh uh, <laughs> well, I'll just say one more thing about that. Because mm. Jason, you and I, I mentioned this to you in an email when we first saw the polls. Coming in hot. That show Ringer. <laughs> how the hell did Ringer even make the 32? Like we talk about how Black Lightning was robbed by not being in there. Mm-hmm. Ringer, if you remember, Rob, was that very short live show with Sarah Michelle Geller playing twins. And it was some of the worst production value. Like the, the shot Gosh. that kept going around the internet was them on a boat and it was mm-hmm. the worst looking oh, thing yeah. like some water splashed up i mean it was much maligned when it was yeah on for being maybe it was crap. uh fans of the soup who um yeah <laughs> <laughs> got it there what, what's uh, just just a quick question what would, what would be like your guys like top two wb shows probably the two that they had um because i watched all 10 seasons of smallville and all 15 of supernatural yeah wb um, specific not cw slash wb yeah i was just meaning wb just in general yeah oh i i yeah i didn't really i feel like i didn't really watch much wb it, i guess that wasn't like that weird period where like you were probably transitioning to college but i mean like dawson's huh. creek was a big deal for mm-hmm. me yeah i kind of miss dawson's creek i kind of like i i remember it being on and everyone was talking yeah. about it but i didn't I make would, it a point to watch i was it. literally i think i was 15 or 16 when the show came on so it was like this is literally yeah. speaking to me i love steven <laughs> Sp- uh spielberg fan pretty much worship the man in a godlike way yeah oh, revealing i mean i had a poster of jaws on my wall so obviously i was a big yeah, right dawson fan until i realized he was a turd and you know pacey was where yeah. it's at and but, I, I, <laughs> I remember when samuel l jackson hosted the mtv music awards and there was this bit where uh he climbed up this yes. trellis yeah. and it was dawson and um uh, is it, it joey joey yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, and so they were getting ready to kiss, this and it was, was so like funny. a slow <laughs> as yeah. they start to make their way, and then you pull back, and they, they show that they're still several feet apart. Yeah, and Samuel yeah, Jackson. The yeah. Like, yeah, they asked him to Cause sing he, the theme song. Yeah, yeah, because he because they were playing the song, and he went up yeah. there to bust oh, the boombox right. that was playing. Yeah. It. Sorry about the stereo, but that song makes me crazy. Oh and so God. once they were done talking, he was like, well, go ahead and kiss. And they look at him because it's like, we can't without the song. Okay, come on. Let's get the show back on the road. Don't worry about me. I'm out of here. Do your thing. Dawson, what's wrong? Okay, okay, what the hell? I don't want to wait for our lives to be over. <laughs> so Samuel L. has to sing it. <laughs> oh my. Uh, and I didn't um, even watch the show, but it was yeah, still like it, 
that, that, are, that still stood out. I was I was pretty big on that, Same. and then I was pretty big big on uh, Buffy. So I realized they couldn't let Buffy in here. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I saw the end of one episode of Buffy. I was like, oh, this show looks funny. No wonder everyone talks about it. But I never made it a point to watch it either. Yeah, I was yeah. just the right demo for that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's now move on to the next topic, which is a sad topic. As yeah. everyone knows, we lost legendary comedian Norm MacDonald. Um, he was one of the most beloved Weekend Update anchors on SNL, did some classic bits on there. Uh, he was Bob <laughs> Dole during that election season in 96. He was uh, Burt Reynolds on Celebrity Jeopardy. Turd Ferguson. Look at this. Mr. Reynolds has apparently changed his name to Turd Ferguson. Yeah, that's right. Turd Ferguson. It's a funny name. Turd Damn it. Ferguson. I was going to say, it wasn't Burt Reynolds. He was Turd Ferguson. He was Turd Ferguson. <laughs> uh, and he, of course, he's been in a bunch of uh, uh, Adam Sandler bits and movies, and he had his own movie, uh, Dirty Work. He also had a, a sitcom at one point. And um, he passed away from cancer he had cancer for nine years and and even apparently people who were close to him didn't know that he had it he um uh, apparently from what i have heard it sounds like he didn't necessarily want people to think about that when thinking of him and um you know it, it, one of the things that really came out this last week was all of his material about people getting cancer because he had a couple of relatives who had cancer and he he said he doesn't think everyone has heard this bit i'm sure but the don't call it battling cancer why are we calling it that because it gives the impression if someone dies from it it's like the cancer one and you're a loser or something so my uncle bert he's my great uncle but we call him uncle bert he got battle cancer now see in the old days a man could just get sick and die now they have to wage a battle so my uncle bert is waging a a courageous battle. And this is the battle. He's lying in a hospital bed with a thing in his arm watching Matlock on the TV. But it's not his fault. What the f he's supposed to do? Oh, I got you. <laughs> now they go, hey, he, he lost his battle. That's no way to end your life, you know? What a loser that guy was. He was waging a brave battle, but at the end, I guess he got kind of cowardly was what happened. And I'm pretty sure, I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure if you die, the cancer also dies at exactly the same time. So that, to me, that's a draw. That's a, you know what I mean? Uh, he was a real gift to the world because of his comedy and his unique perspective and I just wanted to talk about him. Uh, he was he was really a great. And uh, I know that Trey and I and also our cousin Jay would talk about stuff he said about OJ or any sort of bit he did on SNL, but especially the OJ jokes, oh, the OJ jokes. Uh, really <laughs> killed us. He had such great jokes about that. And um, if you haven't listened to Bob Saget's podcast he has an episode about norm i would suggest listening to that conan o'brien did one on his podcast it's also very nice it was very very introspective because not only was it conan and andy but it was also the uh, one of the producers for conan's show who worked with norm on the segment they were going to do on every appearance that norm had on on conan and they talked about the moth bit. Now, not all your material comes uh, from, the, from the news, is that right? My strongest material comes from real life. We send, we send cars for our guests, yes. Yeah, so I got in it, and that's, I, you know, I get material that way. My driver tells me a joke. <laughs> <laughs> huh? A moth goes into a podiatrist's office. A moth goes into a podiatrist's office, right. You are correct. <laughs> the podiatrist's office says, what's the problem? And the moth says, what's the problem? Where do I begin, man? I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I don't even know if Gregory Alinovich knows. He only knows that he has power over me. My youngest, Alexandria, she fell in the, in the, in the cold of last year. Mm -hmm. And my other boy. <laughs> and this is the hardest pill. When I look in his eyes, all I see is the same cowardice that I catch when I take a glimpse of my own face in the mirror. 
If only the cowardice was stronger, then perhaps, perhaps I could bring myself to reach over to that cocked and loaded gun and end this hellish facade once How long a drive was this? And so the, moth, the, the doctor says, Moth, man, you're troubled, but you should be seeing a psychiatrist. Why on earth did you come? And the moth said, because the light was on. My congratulations to anyone who stuck it through to the end. And he talked about uh, how he was and getting on that show is very enlightening and uh, just the great stories. And it's a, it's a really huge loss to the comedy world that he, um, that he passed before everyone could tell him how much he loved him. So uh, what do you guys feel about Norm MacDonald? I mean, yeah, I'm, I mean, to me, he was, I was just, you know, he was just the guy, like I wasn't, like I wasn't old enough to really enjoy Dennis Miller. And so, you know, when I try to go back, I know all about the baggage about how Miller is now. So I don't mm-hmm. really enjoy watching old clips of him. Um, and then Kevin Nealon, I thought that Kevin Nealon was phenomenal. He did. He was he really was great really at just as a more of a straight character, but Norm Macdonald felt like rock and roll to me. Like he was just yeah. like, he was just so, even though he wasn't, he was so edgy with being like this different sort of edgy. Just the way he would deliver something, he'd wait three seconds or just, la- you know, <laughs> he just would like, huh, you know, because yeah. like, he, cause, you know, OJ, you know, because he because he killed two people. <laughs> and just, stuff, just like, I, I did. I, I did myself a favor the other day and it, it came. I started looking up Norm stuff on YouTube and there there came up a, a compilation that was literally every joke he made about OJ on weekend. Oh, Week. I've got to see that. It's like 34 I, minutes because I, I saw like I saw yeah. Howard Stern shared one clip. That was another good thing to watch is how we yeah. been talking about Norm. And that's on YouTube. And it was um, uh, that OJ said in his book that he would die. He would, he would uh, uh, take a bullet for Nicole. And Norm MacDonald's joke was, oh, the luck. The, the one guy in the world who would die for you murders you. you. OJ Simpson says that he would have taken a bullet or stood in front of a train for Nicole. That is some bad luck when the one guy who would have died for you kills you. That's probably, <laughs> you don't get worse luck than that. <laughs> oh, what bad Such luck. Such a Nicole good joke. Person. Oh, gosh. Those jokes were amazing, yeah. truly. And just, so there, there, there is one joke I just want to say, like, and I tried to find the clip, and, and maybe you can find it, Trey, but, like, he did this one. He used to make a lot of jokes about David Copperfield too. That was one. He loved making jokes about David Copperfield. And if you're not aware of him, you've never been to Vegas, but basically he's, he's a, an illusionist. I've magic's seen not, David Copperfield live in person. By the magic's way. not real. In, in Connecticut. You and I. Went. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That was so damn. I so, saw this no, too. He, but he did the, he did this joke about David Copperfield because he used to date Claudia Schiffer and it was like mm-hmm. Claudia Schiffer uh, recently broke up with David Copperfield. He was so heartbroken over the breakup. He walked out into the middle of the street and got hit by a bus. This is all is according to the magazine Things I Wish Happened. This week, supermodel Claudia Schiffer broke up with magician David Copperfield. Devastated Copperfield wandered out onto the street and was hit by a bus. According to the current issue of Things I wish really happened. (laughs) (laughs) And on the cover of the magazine, it shows whiskey cures AIDS. (laughs) For things I wish happened. (laughs) Yeah, he was really, he was something special. Um, Yeah, and you mentioned his uh, delivery. And I realized the other day, I I sort of pieced this together that when I did stand up, a lot of my memory, a lot of my uh, a lot of my rhythm was actually Norm. Uh, a guy saw me, a guy I opened for once in, in Greenville, South Carolina, told me after, uh, after seeing me, he was like, oh, you're like this great blend of Seinfeld and Dave Chappelle. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I see that. But there's, there is some Norm in there because I would definitely, and I didn't consciously think, Oh, like Norm McDonald when I did this, but I would tell a joke and I would let it land and I would just stare off into the abyss of the audience as if to say like, yeah, I just told this joke. That's ridiculous. Like I had, I had this ridiculous joke about Lacoste 
uh, and I'll just do it now just because it, it'll help sell the point. But it was, I want a whole outfit of Lacoste, it is an entire Lacoste outfit, Lacoste shoes, Lacoste pants, Lacoste up tops, an entire outfit of Lacoste. But at what Lacoste? <laughs> And it would always do well with the audience. And I <laughs> I've heard that I, one before. Be, yeah, I, it would. There was a friend, my friend Sharma would, he howled the first time he heard me do it, which may have been the first time I did it. And uh, he's a really funny dude. And he had me on his podcast and asked me to do it again because he liked it. So he always loved that joke. It was a joke that got the comics going because of how ridiculous and absurd it is yeah. and it always like the audience would be like are you kidding me and and I enjoyed that reaction and I didn't <laughs> realize until this week that that was entirely influenced by my love of Norm Macdonald's absurdity how, yeah, I'm how still awesome. shaking my head by the way yeah. for people that's one of those types of jokes yeah. that for me lands as a shake my head while smiling <laughs> yeah because <laughs> it's just um, that ridiculous how often do you guys and i didn't realize how much i i did this but do note to self because i was I got gonna that mention from, I, <laughs> I i got that i totally got that from norm and yeah. it's always yeah note to self. we all did yeah he would yeah. he would bomb on purpose Mm -hmm. so that he could do the note to note self to self i mean it's just <laughs> yeah it, it, such a, and they're always just so brutal yeah. it's like oh god director joel schumacher said quote in this one all the costumes will have nipples <laughs> note to self do not watch the next batman and robin <laughs> lawmakers passed a measure to abolish the state's 15-year statute of limitations on first-degree murder note to self cancel plans to return to New Mexico. <laughs> the Bowman Gray School of Medicine is looking for 20 habitual marijuana smokers who they'll provide with free pot in order to study the effects of the drug. Yeah! Note to self, spend summer vacation at Bowman Gray School of Medicine. <laughs> Maybe take Timmy Meadows along with you. <laughs> yeah. and, and please also go listen to that Conan episode, but one of the things they said, one one thing Conan was saying that was that Norm told him, Norm McDonald told him that the best place to try out jokes is the dress rehearsal of SNL. Because if it did well at that, it always did well on the live. And if it didn't do well at dress, then it definitely didn't do well live. But what Norm would do if he liked a joke, and if Jim Downey, who was head writer at the time, liked the joke, he would do it anyway. Even <laughs> if it didn't bomb, even if it didn't do well, even if it bombed at dress, he would do it anyway in the live show because it meant something to him. And that yeah. is a certain level of integrity that I, I think the best have. Uh, the best comment. I asked Mark Marin one time about jokes, like, what if, is there a joke that you really love that the audience doesn't really seem to take to like should you keep doing that joke or should you let it go because i have a joke that i love and the audience doesn't seem to be into it and he said no i do jokes that i just like because you got to have those in there and i yeah. really admired that and i and the fact that norm knew it bombed and he was about to go on <laughs> live and do it knowing it was going to bomb that takes so much integrity and so many so much guts that he wasn't going to pander to the audience he yeah. wasn't going to say uh well let me just do the jokes that do it if he thought a joke was meaningful he did it and that that's just the best attitude to have but he could also milk the bombing really well yeah yeah oh and, yeah you partly mm -hmm. wanted to see that you know you yeah. wanted to mm -hmm. see it's like again that's why it felt like like punk rock in a way because it was like he was he was more than willing to to make himself like, like an ass and and mm -hmm. go with like that awkwardness he enjoyed i think i always kind of felt he enjoyed when people when probably there was like two or three people in the crowd that laughed but everybody else was like oh oh you know what i mean i felt like or mm -hmm. like just silent i think he enjoyed the cringe yeah 
Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. Uh, and just to talk a little bit more about the impact he had on me, and then we'll uh, go to you, Trey. Like 15 years ago, 14, 15 years ago, Rob, you had to be there for this. I know other friend of the sh- best friend of the show, Clay, was there. He's partial uh, friend, not a best friend. Okay. Not a best friend. <laughs> but we were at Barley's in Greenville. <laughs> Barley's is a pizzeria that we would we would go to a lot. Love that place. We'd Great go place. upstairs and hang out. And we were there one time, and there was this guy who looked so much like David Letterman, it was jarring. <laughs> yes. Okay, Rob remembers this. Yes. He was definitely yes. There. And it wasn't, it wasn't David Letterman, but it was uncanny, the resemblance. It was so funny to me. And I, I kept talking about it. And then when we were leaving, it happened to me that those guys were in front of us. That the, the David Letterman lookalike was in front of us. And we were walking down this stairwell, this echoey stairwell. And so because I kept saying, like, that guy looks like David Letterman, I decided to make a joke out of it. And while he's walking away, I went, "Uh, you got any gum? And it just (laughs) echoed and reverberated in the room. (laughs) So it's maybe one of those things you had to be there to enjoy. But every time to this day, if I'm ever walking in that stairwell, if I'm at Barley's, like at the top of the stairwell, I did this with Justina on my first date. <laughs> uh, yeah, I yeah. went, uh, you got any gum? And the reason I bring this up right now is not just because Norm MacDonald loved David Letterman. The thing is, David Letterman never said, uh, <laughs> you got any gum? Norm MacDonald said that in an mm-hmm. SNL sketch where he was yep. playing David Letterman. David Letterman. Mm-hmm. So the guy walks up to me, looks me right in the eye, gives me one of these, he goes, uh, uh, you, you got any gum? Uh, uh, you, you, you got any gum? <laughs> it was just so funny to me that I made that my impression of David Letterman <laughs> because I just loved it so much when Norm Macdonald would do that. It was That's the kind how... of non sequitur that Letterman would do. Right, so Norm right. Norm captured that perfectly. <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> But that's the thing, like that's how deep of an impact Norm MacDonald has had on comics, that not only do we want to be like him and try to be like him, we try to be like him when he's trying to be like someone else. That's yeah. how good he was. I mean, and that's it's, the yeah, impact I, he had on me. I, I do every once in a while. I find myself if I'm chewing a piece of gum. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll do a Burt Reynolds. Just like, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Oh, it's yeah. Turf Ferguson. <laughs> oh gosh, he was so great in those. Uh, Trey, yeah. what do you have to say about Norm? So Norm a little bit of SNL history to make this make full sense. So for those who don't know, Weekend Update was created by Chevy Chase. Good evening. I'm God, and here's the news. <laughs> Right. He was a writer on the show who then became an on-air person, mostly because of Weekend Update and his Gerald Ford uh, Pratt Falls. And so he was very uh, protective of, of Weekend Update and had a specific idea of what Weekend Update was and how it was supposed to be executed. And he had said numerous times, no matter how great Kevin Nealon was, no matter how great Dennis Miller was, no matter how loved they were, Uh, Tina Fey and Jimmy Fallon, all the people who've done great. Chevy said the only person who did it right was Norm MacDonald. The only other guy I think who did it funny was um, uh, Norm. Yeah. And and it's that same kind of, uh, all the stuff you two have been saying already, that almost like don't give a bleep (laughs) way that he approached it. Norm was probably the last dangerous cast member uh, well, zero f being... words trey's friend <laughs> <laughs> um but but it was like it was his delivery was so perfect and you talk about the oj jokes i remember one i don't quite remember the setup but i remember that in in real life oj talked about how he was once he was acquitted he was going to tirelessly look for the real yeah. killer yeah. And so that's the thing that Norman kept Norm kept making fun of. And, and the one that stands out in memory is when uh, the, the picture above Norm's shoulder was OJ on the golf course golf taking course. a swing. And he said, and the I mean, search continues. OJ Simpson vowed never to rest until the real killers 
of Nicole Brown Simpson are brought to justice. The manhunt continues. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I literally watched this video, this 34 minute video of Norm OJ jokes on YouTube. Oh, you gotta find it. And that was on there. And yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll find it in my history and send it to you. And we'll link it in the bio. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's, but there, I mean, uh, if you go on there, watch the interview. It's so cringy. It might make you vomit, but he was on Conan one time with Courtney Thorne Smith. This is so great, though. It, he is just. <laughs> And that's the oh other big God. thing was the uh, he was he was making fun of Carrot Top, which was because he was in a movie that Courtney Thorne Smith was there to promote. Oh. And uh, he keeps interrupting and, <laughs> and being difficult. And, and uh, asking about Melrose Place. All right. Are you talking about Melrose Place? <laughs> You're the biggest ass I ever met. <laughs> And when I lived in L.A., I lived in, on the actual street called Melrose Place. There's a Melrose? Is there really a Melrose Place? There's really place? a Melrose, a Melrose Place. Okay. So they opened a restaurant called Melrose Place on it. Uh -huh. Every time I go out, there's all these, like, tourists. <laughs> and they're taking pictures in front of this restaurant. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then he talking says... about Melrose Place. <laughs> And he said, because there was a movie called Nine and a Half Weeks, that was a sexy movie that came out. Norm made a joke like, what's the name of your movie? Nine and a Half Seconds. seconds. Because it's <laughs> Carrot Top. I'm saying he's got erectile dysfunction or something like that. Wait a minute, she left Melrose Place to do a movie with Carrot Top? <laughs> That's where I'm going. What, uh, what's he like, first of all? He's extraordinarily sweet. Nice guy. Do you have a scene where you and, and you, you and him embrace? Yeah, lots of making out. Oh, for God's sake. It's like nine and a half weeks, but carrot top. <laughs> we were doing. Is it called nine and a half seconds? <laughs> like he's premature ejaculated. <laughs> we got it. You know, you know what happened? He said nine and a half seconds. And I'm looking at him because I know there's more. And I see the glimmer in the eye and then bang. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and then at the end, when Conan is ending the interview and with Courtney Thorne Smith and saying, well, this movie is coming out, uh, titled to be determined. And she said, it's chairman of the board. And so Conan, <laughs> thinking he can best Norm MacDonald in this second, he goes, do something with that, freak. <laughs> Norm McDonald takes it and goes, ah, I bet it's board spelled B-O-R-E-D. If it's got carrot top in it, you know what a good name for it would be? What's that, Norm? Box office poison. <laughs> All right, well, there's this two-hour season finale of Melrose Place. There's this movie coming out. Fatal undetermined at this point. Chairman of the board. Oh, do something with that, you freak. <laughs> I, I bet the board is spelled B-O-R-E-D. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is, it, is, it, is she lose? I mean, she's la I mean, she went with it. She was I, laughing. She, yeah, she was laughing at it. But oh my god, <laughs> can you imagine uh, trying to have it the 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 having to promote a movie that stars Carrot Top, and you were on one of the number one shows in America, and now you're in a movie with Carrot Top, and you're promoting it, and and then you're yeah. in the show with Norm Macdonald. Like, yeah. just go watch the. It's so good. <laughs> It's great yeah, stuff. please go watch it. Watch that stuff. It's so hilarious. The other thing that was great to me about Norm, and, and it, I didn't think about it when these sketches were airing live when they were new, but kind of looking back at the clips, it's not like he was actually good at impressions. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but his version of these characters were uh -huh. great. Like Bob Dole, Bob Dole. He, it was more, Norm MacDonald doing like an older man's voice all, yeah, and that was about it but what he was doing with it was just so ridiculous yeah especially like yeah. that uh that spoof of mtv's real world where bob dole was one of the real world contestants this is a true story seven strangers pick to live in a house have their lives taped find out what happens people stop being polite start getting real Real world, Chicago. Who the hell ate my peanut butter? Peanut butter. I guess I did. That's all gone. Next time, ask. 
Nobody eats Bob Dole's peanut butter without asking. Whatever. Bob Dole likes peanut butter. Bob Dole's never made a secret of that. Look, the reason I called this meeting, all right, is because I think there's some issues that we need to face. Get out of my chair. It's Bob Dole's chair and everybody knows it. Come on, get out there. Come on. <laughs> Bob Dole. Oh. Uh, just classic. I did. Yeah. I mean, and also, I think you mentioned it before with Dirty Work. He's got so many good. It's not a good movie. It's like that typical Adam Sandler type of what the hell is the plot? But and it's it's just the typical. They got to raise a, a bunch vehicle of money for really funny fast. moments. It, but there is an out of this world performance by Chris Farley in it, who plays this guy who had yes. Wasn't that Farley's last movie? No, uh, unfortunately, have... no, it was the one he did with Matthew Perry. Um, and you know I what? Was I was East. reading, uh, no. I read that, so that was Almost Heroes, Almost Heroes, uh, thank uh, you, with Matthew Perry. Well, yeah, and that the thing about that, um, I mean, this is a Chris Farley side topic here, but mm -hmm. that movie apparently, for one, the script was one of the like blacklisted scripts and. All these people are like, oh, it's such a great script. There's no way to make this good. Christopher Guest directs that movie. And people were saying that what they filmed was great. There are people who were just like involved. I just read about yeah. this, that they actually made a very good movie. But the studio got their hands in the edit mm. room and made it this silly slapstick movie. So it's a better movie uh, than what we saw, apparently. Um. That would be nice. Is there, is there, do we know of a time when the studio got their hands into something and the and the made it better? Was, yeah. <laughs> it there seems like every be. time I hear about it, it's the studio made I it have, worse. I've heard mm -hmm. some some creative people say, you know, every once in a while you do get a note from the studio that's actually really worth its weight. And it is a good point. Yeah. But yeah, most of the time it's, it's bullshit. But <laughs> yeah. 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 No, but but dirty, yeah, yeah. The but back to dirty work. He has this one line where he like the part of the plot is basically he gets paid to 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 do you know dirty things to people. So like if mm. you've got somebody who's bothering you, you can pay him and he'll do something really horrible, including this guy who's like a car salesman and his lot, and he has all he pays all these prostitutes to be in the trunks of all these cars and they start opening up and they're like oh my god there's there's a dead prostitute and norman McDonald says i haven't seen so many dead prostitutes in my life and another guy off camera's like lord knows i have i've never seen so many dead hookers in all my life lord knows i have <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that movie, I'm telling you, Chris Farley has a part where he talks to some skunks, and I'm telling you, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Okay. And then, he, that, oh, come on, I got to do one Chris Farley thing where he's like at this bar, they're about to get into a fight, and he's like, G7, Street Fighter Man, Rolling Stones, and he clicks the button, and this guy's like, I think you just hit G8, and it's, do you like pina coladas? <laughs> and they're having a bar fight to escape the pina colada song. <laughs> I gotta see that movie again. I really oh, enjoyed geez. it when I, I was. I, meant, I was trying to find it the other night to see if it was streaming anywhere. I might. I might Not, just buy it on Amazon. I'm just gonna have to do that. Um, One last quintessential well, Norm thing for me is, uh, like, when he played the on SNL when he played like the the biker kind of guy. Yeah, uh, I think there are two different sketches that are sort of like that. One where. One was the West Side Story spoof, where he's like, where's all the, <laughs> why are you singing about this? I did oh, not. Oh, yes, you did. No. Hey, 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 knock it off. Remember, you're both cobras. You're a cobra boy, and don't you forget it. You're a cobra boy. All right, so, uh, let's see. What the hell what? was that? What was what? You just sang. Oh, yeah, I did, didn't I? We're fast and we're strong and we're tough. We'll teach them the meaning of rough. Whoa. What? How do you come up with a song so fast? I don't know, just, just came to me. What about You go over hey, to hey, me. Hey, hey, hey. Did you really like it? What? The song. I like another song, too, you know? You know this one? It's called, uh, While You Were Singing, I Got Stabbed in the Head by a Puerto Rican. Well, well, what do we have here? 
Looks like a little cobra all on his own. Danny! <laughs> oh, no, that's not good. Oh, oh God, this isn't working out. Cobra. <laughs> No, what the hell are you doing? You, you, you call that being a cobra? Boy, show them what it means to be a panther. Panthers! Panthers. Yeah. Cobras! Panthers! Yeah. Cobras! <laughs> it's oh like, God. oh no. <laughs> what are you doing now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Well, rest in peace, Norm McDonald. Thank you yeah. for the great memories and. Uh, you know, we can keep reliving those memories thanks to the internet. Let's move on to what we're looking forward to in these new fall shows and movies. So I'm, as always, excited about SNL. That's, that is about to have it, its season premiere, and I'm crossing my fingers for a John Mulaney premiere hosting moment. I think that's uh, a very real possibility uh, i was trying to guess who else might be uh, every year i try to guess on twitter who is going to host this year and i'm always wrong uh <laughs> but, i bet well uh, i bet hater probably i mean is is there going to be a new barry i'm sure coming? he's going to host i'm also crossing my fingers for gene smart yeah yeah That'd be great that probably and she won tonight i think Yes, yeah, uh, she won yeah. um, best actress for uh, for Hacks. Uh, Hacks did had a, a great run tonight, so that good. Yeah, good for them. We'll save that for later. Sorry, but I mean, just mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so she's got some buzz, so it'll be worth it. Sudeikis might host because of Lasso. Yep, uh, Sudeikis has got to host. It's got to happen. Uh, I don't know there's why no he reason hasn't. that shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, Roy Kent, the dude uh, who plays Brett Roy Gilson. Kent, who is uh, yes, uh, Brett Gilson. Goldstein? Is it, it Gildstein or, or Golds? I don't know. They said it, and I was like, "Oh wait, what? How do you say that?" It might I know be I'm gonna have to say it later. Um, it's, he, it's, it's, it's Rumpelstiltskin. That's what it is. I, I w- hopefully he hosts because uh, he would be great. Um, four people from that show nominated from Ted Lasso nominated for uh, supporting actor in a comedy series. We'll talk about that in a minute. We're talking about what we are. Uh, looking forward to mm-hmm. in, in our SNL host guesses. Um, I'm hoping, I don't know if he's too busy, but it would be nice if Donald Glover hosted again. Yeah, He was so great when he hosted before. Um, those are my, those are my guesses. And that for TV, I don't really know what is yet to come out. I mean, I, I would love to see another season of Barry. But uh, yeah. what's coming out this fall, I don't know what's happening or, uh, uh, that's, that I'm super excited about because it seems like everything was, is kind of ending now because of COVID. That everything right. Like, <laughs> the, yeah, the, it's, it's, well, and it's hard. It's like, well, and then everything it, doesn't release like it used to. So right, it's like, for sure. I get this new season now and this new season, you yeah. know. Hawkeye, Hawkeye looks good. I was going to say, I think I, I, Hawkeye looks really good. Mm-hmm. Should we be worried? No, no, it's nothing. I'll be home for Christmas. I promise. You're a Hawkeye. Who the hell are you? Some people have actually called me the world's greatest archer. Are you one of those people? It's the... Holy sh... There are arrows more dangerous than that one? That's probably that's probably my number one show to watch. Um, this, it would, so far, it was that. Same here. Oh, and there's a new yeah. psych movie, too. Uh, it's going to be on. Yeah, they, do, they are doing a new psych movie. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Looking forward to that. Uh, I will have to wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, SNL, Hawkeye, mm-hmm. uh, Barry, I guess, if that's happening. I guess that's uh, happening. Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if that's coming out in the fall. And the Psych movie, which is mm-hmm. coming out um, before the end of the year. Uh, and for movies, I'll just go ahead and say now, Ghostbusters Afterlife, um, Bond, uh, the, the No Time to Die, the final, I guess it's officially the final one with Daniel yeah. Craig. Um, he's got Knives Out, though. That, that's I'm sure, the sequel to that. I'm sure it's going to be great. West Side Story, a buddy of mine is uh, uh, 
one of the dancers in that. And I've actually never seen the original, but I might see the original just so I can appreciate this remake. Um, <laughs> but a friend of mine is in it. Um, okay. Previous guest, Andy, his, uh, his partner, his girlfriend, Kelly, that's the, she's a dancer and she's fantastic and she's going to be in it. Uh, Eternal, so I'm looking forward to that, and Spider-Man No Way Home. I um, am very excited um, to see Dune. I'm, that's mm. the, that's probably my maybe no. It's really hard because like if I can only go see a couple more movies this year, um, No Time to Die. I mean, I love Daniel Craig as Bond. I wasn't crazy about Spectre. I, it was really disappointing, but I think that's because yeah. Skyfall might be the greatest Bond movie ever. Don't at me, bro. Um, <laughs> It's also got one of the great songs. It, it is. Great- Skyfall is where we start. Place it all together at Skyfall. I Gold was finger. getting... Goldfinger, he's the man, the man with a mind. There yeah. was something I, I would have to rewatch those because I was a little. I just recently saw Spectre because yeah. the previous two I just wasn't as into. I, um, yeah. Particularly Quantum of Solace. Yeah. Quantum I think was, the bad yeah. taste that Quantum of Solace left me with made me not as into Skyfall. But when I yeah. think back about what's in Skyfall, I'm like, yeah, that movie is good. I think I was going into that with the filter of not having enjoyed Quantum of Solace. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, Skyfall um, was great, though. I enjoyed it. I'm behind in my Daniel Craig Bond movie watching. I yeah. haven't seen Spectre yet, but um, it, you know, Daniel Craig is a great Bond. I mean, he, uh, he is. The scene, and we probably talked about this on a previous pop talk, but the scene of Craig that kind of basically defines his bond to me is in i think it's in skyfall when the train is breaking apart and he lands in the justice suit suit. yeah Yeah. it's like oh man that's a badass bond yeah Yeah. (laughs) Uh, and i I really started paying attention to bond with brosnan so i like brosnan name's bond james bond he doesn't need the gun that depends on your definition of safe sex. Oh, I yeah. like Brosnan. I love. I like Golden Brosnan. I, I like Golden Eye, and they mm-hmm. really fall off after that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, that Brosnan. I yeah, like him in those movies more than I like the movies. The movies, yeah. But Golden Eye is actually the same really about good. Him. Golden Eye is solid. Yeah. Um, Golden Eye solid. Yeah. yeah, and especially if you do, if you ever like want to like say like go watch Quantum of Solace and then watch like Live and Let Die. <laughs> Himself. Here you only live twice. Bond is dead. Bond is alive. Kill Bond. <laughs> Welcome to Japan, Mr. Bond. One of those, and you'd be like, "Oh my God!" Like Quantum of Solace is like an Oscar winning film. <laughs> I actually could not get into Roger Moore, and I've never seen the George Lazenby one. Well, and the, and the honest to God truth is not all Sean Connery bonds are great either. Right. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of like. His last I think one there's was a little weird, but it was because it was a yeah. remake of one of his own. One of his own. Oh, you're Mr. Bond. I believe I'm having you in half an hour. Oh, splendid. Your room or mine. You're obviously well equipped. Thank you, James. So are you. No, it was one of Roger Moore's. No, you're was right. It? it was one of his own. Oh. Maybe it was one of his own. I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was uh, one of his own that he was. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it is one of its own. I think you got the point. Have you seen everything you came to see? Go back to your friends and report. The little fish I throw back into the sea. Come on! Friends of yours, no doubt. Come in. Suck it. Yeah. 
but they're weird. Wrong. He kind of tried to Jay Leno the situation by he coming did. back. As he was like, I don't, I don't like this Roger Moore. <laughs> and that's the thing for a lot of people, like my roommate in college, uh, Roger Moore was his bond, but it just I it was our always just Jay even the clips. Him. Yeah, well, just, I mean, just seeing clips it, of it, it always looks so silly in comparison it, yeah. to the others. I think uh-huh. it, it depends on age because like, yeah, because like the um like my dad was obviously like a big Sean Connery guy, uh-huh. but I were like listening to like some podcasts like like Bill Simmons and stuff. He talks about how he liked Roger Moore and more. And it was probably because of he saw those in the theater and like and also yeah, it's probably gone. Those also are Bill probably, Simmons has bad taste. <laughs> no. Oh, whatever. But it's also probably like like with yeah. SNL, Lauren has always said that people's favorite <laughs> cast is who was the yeah. cast when they were in high school. Mm-hmm. And so I it's probably yeah. much the same yeah. thing with Bond, which is why as much as I love Daniel Craig. There's a little extra love for Brosnan because that's when I started paying attention. Oh, yeah. I remember like mm-hmm. going to see Golden Eye in the theater and then like just being really excited because of the Z3 and stuff in it. But yeah. <laughs> that's sort of how I am, Trey, with Dennis Miller on Weekend Update because yeah, me too. when I started watching new episodes of SNL religiously, he was the Weekend Update anchor. And I loved him. And I loved mm-hmm. Dennis Miller live um, because I was already like primed to enjoy that um but also when i first started watching snl was the old episodes and it was chevy chase so mm. I, you know i have that same sort of feeling of, of love for those two uh as yeah. well just like you know when you're a kid watching something that's going to hold a special place in your heart it does yeah it does. I, I was yeah. the same with chevy and, and dennis for the same reasons and i remember i can't remember the setup now but i made some joke to you in dennis miller voice like is like Caligula at Churchill Downs. <laughs> I don't mean a rant here. <sighs> yeah, I, I slip into a little, uh, if I ever say some big word or whatever, I guess I probably slip into a little Dennis Miller. Um, <laughs> if I want to say it sarcastically. Uh, is there anything, are there any other films you're you're looking forward to or shows you're looking forward to? Um, well, so, yeah, like I said, Dune. Dune's probably like I said, like Dune's the other one where I'm really like that one. I, I what I've been reading is it's, it's well worth seeing in the theater. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I, loved, I, I, I saw the, the trailer. Original. I was like, that looks like they made a, a good film. My planet Arrakis is so beautiful when the sun is low. <laughs> Their cruelty to my people. Is all I've known. Duncan, can I trust you with something? Yes, always. You know that. I've been having dreams. Dreams make good stories. But everything important happens when we're awake. There is no faith that we betray. Smile, Gurney. I am smiling. A great man doesn't seek to lead. He's called to it. But if your answer is no, you'll still be the only thing I ever needed you to be. My son. I never got into the original, and I tried to watch it just because things in it. I will kill him! A beginning is a very delicate time. In this time, the most precious substance in the universe is the spice melange. Exists on only one planet in Arrakis, also known as Dune. He who controls the spice controls the universe! Deliberate and systematic destruction of all life on Arrakis. I will love you forever. Emperor, we come for you. And yeah. I was like, ah, it's not my thing. Yeah, it's weird. And like that, obviously, it was like the most legit movie David Lynch has ever made. So, <laughs> and and it's still, it's there's a little bit of Lynch in that. But um, I know I've read the book and stuff, so I'm I'm looking. I know, and for those who go see it, you should know that this is part one of two. So um, it does kind of leave on a cliffhanger because it's only half the book and i don't think a lot of people know that because they were like we can't cram all of this into one movie so right yeah you got anything to add trey well it's a lot of the same stuff that you said um just because again covid screwed everything up so it's it's hard to kind of keep track of (laughs) what is when stuff is coming and what's new (laughs) and all of that yeah Uh, like you know obviously marvel They've mm-hmm. done no wrong in the last couple of years, basically. Uh, so, you know, like you two, I'm, I'm looking forward to Hawkeye because that trailer looked great. 
Um, I did. Had that, I mean, a lot of people online were comparing it to like Die Hard because of the Christmas. Yeah, or I was thinking of um, uh, Lethal Weapon. You know, it's like Shane yeah. Black, mm-hmm. basically. Like, yeah, it kind of had like that feel to me. And I, I, I love any action movie set at Christmas time. <laughs> yeah, so so that one I think is going to be great. And and of course for movies, just like Jason said, Ghostbusters Afterlife, because that one looks like it's the movie they should have done in 2016. In, in, instead of diverging um oh, i don't every, want to get canceled so let's not say anything bad honestly, about that movie. i know you liked it my problem with that movie has more to do with what may have been a lot of weird uh studio intervention because there were some things that were like you know that do you remember that scene where all the characters are like possessed or whatever yeah and they're like moving in formation it's like clearly mm-hmm. setting up something like them all dancing hello i would like to see you dance I can show you. and i was like that's it's setting up something that i think i is going to be corny that i won't like and then they don't do it and it's like well why did you set it you brought a gun into the first act and you never fired it for the rest of the play. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of feel like the problem with uh, Ghostbusters 2016 is less the people who are in it and more the uh, creative forces behind it. Yeah. yeah, it's like we said that in the previous pop talk when we were talking about reboots and all that. Yeah. It's not the cast. The cast is great. Yeah, the cast should have been great. The cast, yeah. cast was great. And I, you know, I said on that podcast that I didn't laugh once during the movie but i did laugh during the trailer like something about those scenes being in the movie it took those laughs away from me but mm. like leslie jones was great in that role i'm about to save you from this ghost ah! okay so i don't know if it was a race thing or a lady thing but i'm mad as hell thank you okay patty stay still i really need you not to tell me anything right now but Patty. Hey, no, no. I'm just gonna go ahead and take off. How about that? No, 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 no. Come on, Patty, Patty. And I don't want to piss off the ghost. Let me know if you need some Metro cards. Because I am really. Yeah. And I like and I like Kate, Kate McKinnon. McKinnon was, was great. She- I can think of seven good uses of a cadaver today. Holtzman, this is serious. And I agree. We all agree. Kate but McKinnon, it, I just deliriously love her. Um, she, and but, Kristen Wiig, quite frankly. And I love Kristen Wiig, but she's them. really not that funny in it. Like it, she yeah, has a couple of moments she, she had. She, yeah. I, I felt like they wanted her to be Bill Murray, but like she's not Bill Murray. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, she was what, too mousy to be Bill Murray. Yeah. And, for whatever reason, Ray, call it fate, call it luck, call it karma. I believe that we were destined to get thrown out of this dump, to go into business for ourselves. This ecto-containment system that Spengler and I have in mind is going to require a load of bread to capitalize. Where are we going to get the money? I don't know. No, guys, I, th- I think we can really do this. To prove the existence of the paranormal, all we have to do is find an entity and capture it and bring it into a controlled environment. Those who you gonna call? Let's go. Let's go. Oh, oh did you want to? I'll let you. Next time. But again, that's how the character was written. It's not Kristen Wiig's fault. No, but, but no. well, they were that, like doing a lot of ad lib and the the and improvising in those moments that felt like fresh and spontaneous. I enjoyed because they're such talented people with yeah. with presence on screen, and so I liked that stuff. But for the first half of the movie, I was like, okay, Leslie Jones, she's had her moments to be Leslie Jones. That's good. Why isn't Kate McKinnon getting those moments? Yeah. And then in the second half is when Kate McKinnon got those. And I love those moments, but as a movie, it's, it's like very flawed and it, and it's for a lot of reasons. I yeah. think the biggest reason was Paul Feig went into a, a, a closet and was smelling his own farts. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I think yeah. to your point, Rob, I think he didn't know when to rein in some of the improvising to stay yeah. on the story. I think he was also the wrong person for the project. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll just say that. Yeah. But, and the reason is, is like for him, he's much better with, he clearly has a prowess with good R rated material. 
because because mm-hmm. uh, he made i think he personally made three and sincere ones. material that's like, yeah, like freaks and geeks brides well yeah but bridesmaids is awesome the heat was awesome great movie and i actually like spy a lot the one he did with that one. that's the one with melissa I know McCarthy. It, but... my father used to bring people here did he also make you dress like a slutty dolphin trainer you want me to have Cagney and Lacey explain it to you? Cagney's gonna come up your ass like a thunderbolt and chew off both your Swedish meatballs. I'm not gonna cry. You're crying now! I'm not! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, she's she's really funny. In she's it. so good. And she's, she's so, good. so much better when she goes blue. And so, mm-hmm. and like, he he seemed like he did really good with her at going blue. So that's why, like, that's why I was so disappointed with Ghostbusters. I was like, what the hell? Like, this just, mm-hmm. you don't get any of the trying to make it, It's the problem that I have with Ghostbusters too. They were trying to make it appeal to kids. Yeah. And the first yeah, they one thought... wasn't trying to appeal to kids. It just and it still it. appealed to kids. Yeah. yeah. But right. the first, but this new one, I mean, obviously does have like a Stranger Things kind of feel to it, which mm-hmm. I'm fine with. I mean, which mm-hmm. Stranger Things was also trying to feel like a lot of the 80s it, stuff. So no, it's exactly. cyclical. And just like it, you know, like the, re- the, the remake of it, like it was mm-hmm. definitely like Stranger Things and all the other stuff it was getting. Um, influences from so Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. why i'm like i think i'm I'm okay with this this one and i mean you've got a funny cast in it and so Mm -hmm. and it sounds like a strong story done well because that was the other thing that i think derailed 2016 is they're trying to do a reboot but sony messed it up in in part in the marketing Mm -hmm. because they're saying 30 years ago yeah it's like well if it's a reboot then 30 years ago didn't happen i mean it's yeah, they're trying it, it, to tie to the nostalgia, but it doesn't tie to the nostalgia. Yeah, it was just really so. Hilarious. It's you know, this one is the perfect, at least as far as the trailers look, mm-hmm. is, is the perfect tie of nostalgia and new story and can go in new directions. Um, but, uh, so, but so the, that's gonna be, yeah. But also, you do have the, the other aspect I find interesting is it's Jason Reitman directed it, right? He's yeah. an, extremely competent director i mean he, he is i, 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 I was a little concerned air. because i juno is a movie he did that i think is great and i really loved um and i was a little concerned with him like is he other than being ivan reitman's son is he the right person for the project like is it gonna feel like a ghostbusters mm-hmm. movie but at this point it's sort of like what is a Ghostbusters movie? You know, what, what is yeah. that feel? We can't expect them to make a movie that feels like a movie that came out in 1980. You know, like, you can't not, expect them And to you're do not going to, who are you going to find to have the chemistry of Murray, Aykroyd, and, right. and, and Ramis? You can't like, recreate you, that 40 years later. Like, and don't Hudson, try that. And Hudson, and Ernie Hudson. Sorry, I'm not going to drop, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ghostbusters 2 forgot about him in the market. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah you know i think that's where paul rudd is a great choice to, to have some of that same yeah. kind of uh, but he but he, he and but you know he can handle that big spectacle kind of movie too right because mm-hmm. of the ant-man and, and Vengeance yeah movies. And, right yeah and then and finn wolfhard's he's in he's in this yep. isn't he yeah mm-hmm. stranger that's, he brings that stranger, thing, stranger things, things cred. yeah and mckenna grace is in a moment because i first learned about her she's a little girl in the movie I first learned about her. Um, Wasn't she Dolly in, Parton? She might have been. I think I, she's Dolly Parton in, in the Dolly Parton. May, I could be wrong there. But it I'll, might I'll, be. I mean, she's in a lot of, I mean, yeah. I won't even be able to name all this stuff. I first learned about her in uh, Designated Survivor. She was Kiefer Sutherland's daughter. Oh, and then okay. I just kept seeing her and stuff. Um, and, and, and she's pulling off a pretty good Egon vibe. In, Egon. Uh, in the trail. So it's... <laughs> Uh, I guess pretty, pretty good, but um, uh, but other movies I'm looking forward to again, more Marvel stuff. Um, Eternals like Jason, Spider Man like Jason. Um, yeah, I'm kind of not, I think, because of all of the weirdness, I'm not super familiar with all the stuff that's coming out. Yeah, uh, but on I TV, I'm just, issue. yeah, on TV, I'm not as into the Arrowverse as I used to be because most of it hasn't been as good lately. Superman and Lois and Stargirl are great. Stargirl is actually not technically Arrowverse, but that and, and Superman and Lois are great. But they're in, you know, Superman and Lois just ended. Stargirl is about to end in a couple of weeks. So it's not really coming up. Uh, so I don't know. I'll just be finding what's out there mm-hmm. and, and testing out some of the new shows that I have questions about, like Ordinary Joe. I'm wondering 
in terms of execution. How is that going to be a series? It's only natural to wonder, what if? I'm Joe. I'm Amy. And what is it that you want to do? I'm going to be the next Billy Joel. What if I asked out that girl I just met? My mom was I love you, Amy. Mm, I love you, Joe. Kill it. It's good to be home! Juilliard, you're like my superhero for getting in. Come to the beach. What if I married my best friend? Sorry, we had three code blues in the hospital with short staff. We gotta go! What if I followed in my father's footsteps? Officer Joe Kimbrough is a true hero. What if you could see the roads you didn't take? Nothing's ever good enough. So you ever get that feeling that one choice could change your whole life? I really like so uh, yeah i know I just so, yeah i'm like when i saw that i was like hmm. but i really like that guy i don't what's that i don't know the james guy. walk yeah well he was he was bob on uh on mad men mm. so whatever you see the not great bob memes it's because he's saying it's john ham is saying that to him <laughs> how are you not great bob <laughs> <laughs> yeah i found i'm not quite met him like I should have introduced myself to him I was at an event in I think it was fall 2009 called the vision awards mm-hmm. and it's for it's, it's awarding different uh, movies and tv shows that uh, do a great job of depicting like mental health and mental health issues oh okay and so if, but an acquaintance of mine uh, was a judge for that award show and so I got an invite by virtue of that uh, and so I was going through the red carpet and I think it was, I think he was just behind me was James Wolk. And this was before any of the shows, maybe he had done Mad Men by this point, but it was before he did that um, Lone Star show is before he did the oh, Robin yeah. Williams, uh, the crazy Seriously. one show. You know, we're breaking the middle of the scene because we can't hold it together. Everyone talks about me riffing. Everyone else can riff just as well. Boss. <sighs> Secret sauce. <laughs> Drive through love and through love and booty shake, booty shake, booty ah, shake, booty ah, shake. You didn't give me enough ketchup packets. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Before all of that stuff, and and he was nominated for um, a movie he did. I think it was someone who had Tourette's. Well, I see you only have your bachelor's degree. Are you planning to get your master's? Yes, sir. Drop as soon as I can. I want to make teaching my life. Drop. I make these noises because I have Tourette syndrome. I'd like to tell you about it. It's a brain thing that causes me to make these strange noises. They're like sneezes. Don't see how you could ever teach a class. How can you expect kids to learn when you're doing that all the time? You know, there are other things besides teaching. Not for me. That is their failure, not yours. Well, it sure seems like my failure. It's okay to be yourself. It's okay to color outside the lines. I just feel so helpless. The one thing I could never fix is the one thing that was hurting you most. It doesn't need fixing. The toughest and, and most dedicated teacher, my constant companion, my Tourette's. He was just happy to be there because it seemed to still be relatively early in his career and he was voicing his happiness of being there. And he seemed like such a good guy that that's the reason why I was thinking, maybe I should introduce myself to this dude because he seems really nice. (laughs) And I didn't. And then when he started blowing up and all of this stuff, I was like, damn, I (laughs) should have introduced myself to that He was really great on um, uh, The Watchmen. He plays uh, the senator. Yeah. Um, The deputy director is going to send you down to Tulsa to take lead on an investigation. What am I investigating? Chief of police got hung. Hanged. He's a good man. His wife ran my Senate campaign. Folks assume the 7th Cavalry did it. You think it was a vigilante? Sure could be. Why? Call professional jealousy. Well, maybe you shouldn't have put the cops in masks, Joe. Crime's down 80% in Tulsa since we passed DOPA. And other cities... You called it DOPA? It's such a great acronym that other cities want to jump on board and pilot it. Masks save lives. My reputation, my name is built on that idea. And now someone's trying to start a war. And if they do, it all goes to shit. And you don't get to be president. President can pardon anybody he wants. Anybody. 
he could even get your owl out of that cage. Yeah, very, very, race, very racist senator. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, with Ordinary Joe, it's like the what if, not to be confused with Marvel's with what, what if, is, but what they if. literally say in the Ordinary Joe commercial, don't you ever wonder what if. What if so it's these if. three different paths that his life could go on after Yeah, graduating. his three different paths are like, you could either be a rock star, you could be a brilliant surgeon, or you could be a cop. I actually think that the surgeon, he's actually a nurse in a, in a different commercial. I thought he was a surgeon, but in some commercial, it was referenced like nurse or something like that. So okay. I don't know. So then what person's like, you could be a rock star, you could be a nurse, or you could be a cop. What are you going to choose? <laughs> like, I yeah, don't know. It's a, it's How I, much heroin do I do as the rock star? <laughs> right. And I, and I don't. I just don't know how that's going to keep unfolding because it's not, it seems to be looking forward as opposed to backward of what could have happened, but whether it's forward or backward, I don't know how it can be ongoing because I compare it to a show like Awake, if you two have ever heard of that. Jason Isaacs is the star. But I've not seen it. It was several years ago. Uh, Jason Isaacs was in a car accident. Mm-hmm. And when he oh, woke no, up, see that. his life yeah. was was kind of split. Like sometimes he'd wake up in like this blue tinted life. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and that's the life where his wife died in the accident and his son lived. Yeah. Or he'd and- wake up in the red tinted life. And that's the version where it was the other way around, where the son yeah. died, but the wife lived. And he keeps going back and forth and he's trying to solve the mystery of which life is real or is either one real. And I might have yeah. the color tints backwards, but whatever. That's the basic the premise. Concept. So it's this ongoing He didn't know which mystery. one was the dream and which one was real life. Yeah. Right. Or if either one was real. Because I think the right. season finale, which turned into the series finale, he woke up and they were both alive. Oh. So it's like, what the, <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. So that, to me, was a very interesting premise because there's this mystery to it that fractured based on this very traumatic event. Whereas oh. Ordinary Joe, it just seems to be wondering there, so there's no mystery. It's just like these three different parallel lives. Mm-hmm. So I'll be very curious as to what I think about it. Whereas Marvel's What If, another example of, Such a good show. Of, of Marvel hitting it out of the park every time, is it's that insane. they take something that we know already happened, that we saw, mm-hmm. and they change one thing and then remix it. And so because of the fact that we have this knowledge of what really happened in, in the main MCU universe, mm-hmm. the new show is this super interesting uh, take on what if this other thing happened instead. Uh, and it turned into, as everybody on the internet saying, into this very accidental loving tribute for Chadwick Boseman as well. Yeah. yeah. But, but even the episodes that don't involve him, they just keep getting better. That, uh, the, the zombie one was off the chain. Baba Yaga. The zombie yeah. one was so good. And I didn't, I love zombie stuff, but I was like, how are they going to do this well? And then they did it amazingly. The Killmonger yeah. one was also like, oh man, this show is so good. Mm-hmm. I keep mm. hope. I mean, I don't, I haven't heard any more about the Black Panther too, but I really hope they figure a way to Marvel. Killmonger's not dead. <laughs> He's going to be the new Black Panther. Like that would be more. I don't. Know. Or Sherry's going to be. A... Yeah, I was telling some friends of mine. I, I saw Shang Chi with with my friends who I see all Marvel movies with. Super fun movie. And, I really enjoyed. Yeah, it's great. And and I don't know how they could explain Killmonger becoming Black Panther, which is a fan favorite theory yeah. or, or idea, uh-huh. because he'd have to have a heel turn in terms of his motivations and, and morality. Yeah. But in terms of him not being dead, once we saw him pull that sword out of himself, we didn't see what happened to the body after that. And, and we and just before that, uh, that's when T'Challa said, maybe we can heal you. So maybe, I mean, if they want to try to come up with some sort of explanation to bring Killmonger back, they could say maybe they did heal him because it's not like they yeah. showed him being buried or showed uh-huh. him actually for real for real being dead so yeah it's true we'll see yeah yeah that would it would be a tough one to imagine everyone in the in wakanda would be like nah you know what 
it's fine. <laughs> that, that would be the hardest. Yeah. Getting him to change his motivations and the audience buying it, sure. Uh, everyone who was so involved, uh, who saw him uh, kill T'Challa, they may not yeah. be as ready to accept him back. But hey, that doesn't, doesn't necessarily comes out stop of sta- anything. He comes out of stasis and says, hi, auntie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's now switch to the last topic, which is the Emmys. Um, we are watching things hot off the presses here. These these wins. Hot! Coming in hot! The uh, telecast just ended and um, didn't get to see all of it because we were recording while it was on. Yeah. But I will say, um, hey, Cedric the Entertainer, so glad that he was hosting. I was very happy to see that he was going to be the host. I loved his... Um, Emmy never won an Emmy support group sketch that they did. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not love the uh, fly on Pence's head sketch. That seemed a little too old. I know it was a big thing that happened on television this year, but mm-hmm. SNL did a really solid bit when it was current, and now it just feels too outdated, and they didn't think they had a take on it that was particularly uh necessary so that was one downside but otherwise i thought it it was uh, a fun telecast i liked that it started off with um them doing a a tip of the hat to biz markey uh, singing uh, you say he's just a friend uh you say i'm just a friend have you ever seen a screen you thought was great 80 inches on the wall your wife trying to hate and from the crack of dawn you feel my every need i watch you so much i forgot how to read and uh, Rita Wilson rapping uh, was unexpected. Oh, I knew they had so much TV. First year of HBO Max, I got for free. I gotta give a shout out to Sesame, Sesame Street. Street. So many characters, I love it. Um, better than Chet Hanks. So at this point, hey, dude, maybe you need to not rap if your mom is better at it than you. <laughs> but uh, did you, either of you see that? at the? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Show? No, I didn't see uh, it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd rather listen to her rap than Chet Hanks. <laughs> I guess you got to hang up the mic when that's the case. Yeah. What was it that she went viral for rapping uh, months ago? Rita Wilson? I don't know. Oh, I didn't know that that happened. And she rapped something. It might have been a Lizzo song or... You know, you might have a competitor, Chameleon. You may not know this about me, but I can spit some flow. You drew a picture of my morning, but you couldn't make my day. I'm walking and you're yawning, but you never look my way. I'm looking down you, darling, in every single way. Hey. Your funny flow is falling and your green cut's on the way. Uh. This ain't got shit to do with shampoo, so watch your head and shoulder. Brother older, bold enough to fold you, yo, I told you. Freakers from the grill town, ill town. So that's how it feels down. The deals that were real, so we're still. Arrayed afraid of what I made and played it with some funky twists of sage, flips and tricks. Put that music in your funky bag. I live and die for hip hop. This is hip hop for today. I give props to hip hop. So hip hop, hooray! Ho! Hey, ho! Hey! Yo! That's classic television! That must be why they had her do this. Uh, yeah. It might have been for Ellen. I can't remember what. For. Oh, okay. Yeah, I missed that. Yeah. Um, it was nice to see, uh, to hear, I should say, um, LL Cool J's flow again. This one's for B I Z M A I K I E N. I got you, bro. We pulled the gambit. They like queens in. We bossed up on TV. Got these famous people screaming. We came to flip the script and take Emmys from Europeans. My job is to inspire. You looking at where you had it? Um, you know, it was just sort of like, oh yeah, he still got it. Did he sing deeper blue or my hat is like a shark's fin? My hat is like a shark fin. Yeah. Deep is blue as my hat is like a shark's fin. Oh. Deep is blue as my hat is like a shark's fin. Oh. Deep is blue as my hat is like a shark's fin. Yeah. <laughs> he fit it in. <laughs> and, that, and, and that is my favorite of the LL Cool J song. No, it's not. Of all the so- rap songs about a shark, LL Cool J's got the best one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let's go to the one. wins of the show um and i'll highlight the comedy one i can't first. believe the comedy one because it's shock when did gabe kaplan somehow win tonight for welcome back cotter it just makes no sense <laughs> what are you referring to i thought we were recording this on time is this not the 1978 
Emmys? <laughs> or a pop talk that's talking about something recent? <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next. I love Gabe Carroll. Bruce Willis. We're talking. Die Hard 3. 3 with a vengeance. <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer. Talking <laughs> about Scarface. <laughs> but the so here are the comedy wins uh, for the big categories. Yeah. Um, outstanding supporting actress went to Ted Lasso's Hannah. Waddingham uh, was very happy that she won. Justina was had her had her face covered. She was so excited. Watching Not to be that. confused with Waddington, which is what Seth Rogen said. The Emmy goes to Hannah Waddington for Ted Lasso. <laughs> yeah, oh, I started? thought there was something yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> supporting actor in a comedy <laughs> series also went to Ted Lasso for Brett Goldstein. Gold, it's, Goldstein. It's, uh, however, you pronounced it earlier. That was correct and not the way oh, I, I do it. We've got Brett Goldstein and Hannah Waddingham. Uh, <laughs> Roy Kent, guys. Um, uh, he, he, I thought maybe there was a chance that since four people from that show were nominated for supporting actor that it was going to uh, make it harder for one person to get the attention. But um Let's be honest, a couple of those people probably should not have been nominated because uh, they're doing good work, but best in the We industry. shouldn't name names, but his, yeah, but I mean, his name starts with a P and ends with an all riser. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't know that Paul Reiser was in Kam- Kaminsky Method, and I like Paul Reiser. You know why? Because no one watches that show. I know. <laughs> That's why. Well, it was getting buzzed the first couple of seasons. It was later that I think it lost buzz. And then um, Adam Arkin uh, isn't on the final season. He, his character died at the end of the previous. Mm, so. Okay. Oh. I, I think wow. that's when I think that's when Paul Reiser joined the show. I don't know. Oh, that makes more sense. But he might have been in it before. Hacks won for outstanding mm-hmm. writer for a comedy series. So uh, awesome for them. Really great. Uh, and outstanding directing for a comedy series also went to Hacks. Outstanding lead actress in a comedy series went to Gene Smart. Was very happy for that. I thought uh, she was really fantastic on the show. Outstanding lead actor in a comedy series went to Jason Sudeikis. That was, uh, I think, what everyone kind of expected Mm -hmm. would happen. Uh, I don't think anyone was surprised about that. Outstanding comedy series, also no surprise, went to Ted Lasso. And I also want to mention, because there are some late night ones, um, SNL won. And for writing... And for the different kind of variety talk series, that's not a sketch because they separated it this year. Both winning, both the big ones there was last week tonight with John Oliver. And John Oliver said something really nice, a couple of nice things in there. One thing he did say, um, you know, the comedy world lost Norm MacDonald. Do like I did and watch all of the things you can online. Watch him and Conan. And uh he mentioned that was the second time he mentioned Conan when he first got up there to accept the award. He said, well, I, like many of us, was really hoping this would go to Conan. And this is bittersweet. And the camera cuts to Conan. And this is why Conan is the king of comedy. (laughs) He takes it and starts doing the like... (laughs) over his shoulder like yeah rah rah for me (laughs) like making a big thing of himself uh getting acknowledged there also speaking of the of the emmys and conan when the chairman of the emmy board or whatever or or, you know when the big wig comes out on these award shows and everyone's like who is this guy he's not a celebrity when that it's always like the president of the board or or president of the uh people who tabulate all of the votes. Chairman and CEO of the Television Academy, Frank Sherma. When that guy came out, Conan stood up and saluted him mm-hmm. the entire speech. Because <laughs> everyone was laughing. It was like, what's going on? And they cut to Conan is from behind. And Conan is staring at the stage with, <laughs> with the salute. And it was just classic. So funny. And he should win an Emmy just for those two moments 
on this telecast. Thank you, Conan, for all that you well, the, do. The part that you left out is when when John Oliver said, I was hoping this would go to Conan, and, and Conan was doing the celebratory thing, he then slowly acted like he just realized, no, He's I fine. didn't. He's fine. <laughs> yeah. And, and then I mean, sat down he, he fit In that quick little bit, he fit like three beats in there. And that's why he's the king, because it was just a quick to the the camera just cutting to him. And he so he's so fast. He's so funny. And um, we will be talking about him the way we were talking about Norm when uh, when he goes. Hopefully it's not anytime soon. Please, world, be a, a more just place and let us have Conan for many more decades. Um, those are the comedies at the Emmys. Any surprises there, fellas? Anything you were wishing had happened differently? No, it's too much content out there for me to be wishing anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like the old days when there were three channels. and mm-hmm. It's hard, yeah. Good point. Because it's like there's so many things you haven't seen. Right. And then, in, you know, when you've got like a consistent, or you know, like when something is has a consensus that it's pretty good like like something like ted lasso mm-hmm. it feels like just inevitable it's gonna win it felt mm-hmm. you know probably probably like what it was like in the 80s with cheers you know what i mean so yeah yeah so it's not 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 a lot of it's like maybe some of the drama stuff's a little surprising but besides that yeah let's talk about the the drama stuff then because mary of east town and the crown just took pretty much everything, especially the crown. Yeah. And that left out the Mandalorian. You know, I think mm-hmm. maybe some people are expecting some love for that. Queen's Gambit got a little bit of love, but it was mostly mayor of East Town and then the crown. Mm-hmm. The crown was with the most, I believe. Then I, I have given, I have actually have not watched either show. Uh, mayor of East Town, I just think murder, dirter. No. Is it my daughter? And when she's murdered. My daughter had a baby daughter and they murdered her. Um, that's all I... <laughs> it's, 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 it's actually... It, I hear it's good. It's amazing. And Gene yeah. Smart, Gene Smart really deserved both nominations. And I thought she mm-hmm. should have won both awards. Oh, wait, it just came to me. That was stupid. Goddamn idiotic. <laughs> Listen to me. Fair's a strong word. Very strong. It would happen twice. Okay, three times tops. Mm-hmm. Um, but but the Julianne Nichols, who won for Mayor of East Town, she has, like, I think I told you guys, but I cried like two times during the finale episode of, of Mayor of East Town. And one of them involved Julianne and the other one involved Gene Smart. So it was yeah. like, either one of them could have won and I would have been pretty happy with it. So yeah. Yeah, I didn't watch it regularly, but our mom, when I was still quarantining at our mom's, she was yeah. watching it. She didn't watch it in a way that I could keep up with it with her, like I'd be walking in the room while she yeah, was well, halfway that's the lady. through. She's doing the lady thing. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but I saw enough to see how great it was. And, mm. I like Evan Peters. And, and Evan Peters, too. He he won mm-hmm. tonight. I, I liked seeing that, too. Mm. Um but but the Queen's Gambit too was amazing. So that's my that was yeah. my problem with that is, and then I hear like I made your stories amazing and some of these other things. I've just never. You know, but that, there's yeah. just so much stuff, and so it's there's it's so, so hard. much stuff. And so the Crown won for outstanding drama series. But here's what it was nominated up against: The Boys, Bridgerton, also very hot topic, and and the Zeitgeist, The Mandalorian, huge smash. Lovecraft Country, Pose, The Handmaid's Tale, and This Is Us. So a lot of competition. And then you have Outstanding Limited Series. That went to the Queen's Gambit, not Mayor of East Town, um, but those were probably the two big, big ones there. I May Destroy You, also nominated WandaVision and The Underground Railroad. Which I sadly have not watched a second of as The Underground Railroad. Because I think that's on Amazon. Was that yeah, there's Amazon? so much stuff. It is. I I don't even know. There is so yeah. much stuff, and it is hard to, uh, it is hard to keep up with it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I yeah, I'm kind of surprised. Did Michael? I guess he didn't win. Michael K. Williams. He didn't win for Lovecraft. No, no. and some so people they're, they're, were they're saying lucky it was they like the Oscars, that. but they are lucky mm-hmm. they didn't make finish that Make thought, it, Trey. 
<laughs> they're lucky they didn't rejigger and make that the last uh, award. Given. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here is Michael's widow to present. God. <laughs> yeah. The award to freaking. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And that was a Lovecraft Country role there. And it's, uh, you know, they did give a moment to say, let's just honor him, you know, like let's, yeah. let's uh, acknowledge mm-hmm. him. I would like to take a moment to mention one nominee, Michael K. Williams. Michael was a brilliantly talented actor and a generous human being. Your excellence, your artistry will endure. We love you. So I'm glad Mm -hmm. that they did that, that they took the time to do that. Uh, Hamilton won Outstanding Variety Special. That was a tough battle, I think. The Friends Reunion, uh, the West Wing Special. David Bo Burns, Burnham. American Utopia, Bo Burnham's Inside, and Dave Chappelle's 846 were all nominated. This is the Outstanding Variety Special pre-recorded, and um, that was uh, a tough category, and uh, great that Hamilton got it, but, you know, you, also would have, Bo Burnham's I thought was great, 846 was great, so it's a tough, that's a did tough you see, one. Did you see David Burns' Utopia? I did not. I heard good things. It's amazing. What if we could eliminate everything from the stage except the stuff we care about the most? Without cables or wires, what would be left? Well, it would be us and you. It's really, it's a really, and I think Spike Lee directed it. Oh, I didn't know that. I was wrong. And also, folks, I was wrong about McKenna Grace being Dolly Parton. That's another little blonde girl. So my bad. (laughs) I did You're right it. about Spike Lee, though, so yeah. you redeemed yourself. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are the Emmys. That's the Emmy yeah. talk. Any final thoughts? I would say that the Emmy telecast in general was funnier than most of these award shows in recent mm-hmm. years. Uh, I think they definitely brought their right. I know you didn't like that uh, fly bit. But at least they were putting sketches in throughout instead of just doing a funny thing at the beginning and then it's just a state affair for the rest of it. Yeah, and I think that's part of what made it fresh. And yeah. that opening that you talked about, I had, there are only really two Emmys where the opening sketch stood out to me and, and, and stayed with me as being like the best two. And that's Conan when he hosted. You headed to Los Angeles for the Emmys, Mr. O'Brien? That's right. I'm hosting. It's my second time. What could possibly go wrong? I've got to get to the Emmys. You want to come with me? Well, we weren't exactly invited. No, I did not have Conan O'Brien fall through the ceiling. Hey, this is Conan. I need directions to the Emmy Awards. Who is this? How did you get this number? My name is Jack Bauer. Now get off this line. All right, Jack Bauer. Excuse me. Can you help me? Epidermis. Pale. Clammy. Age 92 or 12. (gasps) But the genitals seem healthy. You are a woman, right? What the? Oh my God! What's happened to me? Dude, get out of my room! Ah! Dad, Conan O'Brien won't come out of the closet. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Oh God! Welcome to another edition of To Catch a Predator. This guy, screen name Conebone69, is by far the creepiest. Very easy to explain. Explain it then. Okay. And, and he went through all the life. different shows. Yeah. That was yeah. so great. I think about that it was a so lot. good. Yeah. And then the other one, I put Conan at number two and Fallon at number one when he did the thing with the Glee. Yeah. The... Hey guys. Hey. Congratulations on all the nominations. See you guys there. Yeah, we uh, we're not going. Can't afford it. It's twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred dollars. There's got to be a way to come up with the. Money. Oh, it's on, bitches.
up your legs round these velvet ribs. We could break this trap, we'll run till we drop. Do you walk with me out on the fire? Cause baby, I'm just as scared of lonely. The amusement park rises, bold and stark. It's a hold on the beach in the mist. The oh, born to run. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not often that you see this kind of crowd lose their shit. Yeah. And, and when, because they're watching and they think it's just going to be this pre recorded thing. And it, it felt like once they realized they were coming onto the stage to complete the rest of the song, it was like there was this extra energy that came up in the crowd and just stood up. And it was, you know, Fallon doing the, the, the it was Bruce Springsteen. Come on! And Tim Gunn, uh, make it work, Jimmy. Dude, your shirt. I'll handle this. Make it work, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's really one of the great award show hosts because he did a great job on MTV and their award shows, and he did a great job with his Emmys hosting. Yeah, and so I think. This opening where they're doing the Bismarck key uh, toast, sort of, while also celebrating television, that's probably become number three for me. Maybe in with time it'll drop out or something, but at least for right now, I think it's up I there. Think in Conan's those... second time would be my number three. I don't remember that one. I remember that one because he said, "This is my second time hosting the Emmys," and. <laughs> As you will learn throughout the show, the third time's the charm. Welcome to the 58th and final Emmy Awards. <laughs> I'm proud to say this is my second time hosting the Emmys. And uh, thank you. Obligatory, thank you. It's my second time hosting, and as you'll see tonight, the third time's the charm. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's, that may have also been the time that he had the bit with Bob Newhart. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, where he had Bob Newhart in a glass case and he was saying if there's only just enough oxygen in the case for like three hours or whatever so you yeah, so we can't go too long, long <laughs> in, your, in your speeches or Bob Newhart will die. Let's face it, the Emmy broadcast unfortunately has a reputation for going long because there are no real consequences for running over until now. Tonight I have placed beloved TV icon Bob Newhart in an airtight container with exactly three hours worth of air. <laughs> if the Emmys run one second over three hours, Bob Newhart dies. <laughs> so keep those speeches short. Mr. Newhart's life is in your hands. Good luck and Godspeed. Okay. <laughs> that will we'll definitely get this the correct info in the enhanced episode yeah, uh, yeah. I, both of his times hosting were really big for me mm -hmm. yeah and you know it's just all the people you named who came out and, and, and did their rapping along with that and ll was the surprise because it looked like it was just going to be cedric mm -hmm. and i think the fact that they did that did it that way helped it to feel even bigger that all of a sudden ll is coming out with his hat mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. doing the the rap and uh, and then Seth Rogen's bit was pretty funny, I thought. Good to be here at the Emmy Awards. Let me start by saying there is way too many of us in this little room. They said this was outdoors. It's not. We're in a hermetically sealed tent right now. I would not have come to this. Why is there a roof? It's more important that we have three chandeliers than that we make sure we don't kill Eugene Levy tonight. The jokes that he, he made and it just kind of kept the energy kept going and Seth uh, then, and I think that the flow of the episode was good, uh, which helped to make it feel fresher and feel like a good show and not just waiting for 
uh, you know, the next award, which people don't care about as much anymore because they can look right. it up online. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so the fact that Cedric didn't have his monologue until after these other bits and after yeah. a couple of awards, I think it was like a new start. Andrew Anderson in the house. Tonight he up against Michael Douglas and Ted Lasso, man. Look like it's still hard out here for a pimp, man. WandaVision, WandaVision, 20, 23 nominations. Gotta say I was a little taken aback when I didn't see Wanda Sykes on there. Don't it sound like Wanda Sykes as a feisty optometrist? Read that line. Your ass is blind. And he had some good jokes in there. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, Jamie Foxx couldn't do that as Django. And he was unchained. The Bridgertons, oh, another one. Woo, the Bridgertons. But I was thinking, ain't no way in hell a black man gonna have that much sex with a white woman in the 1800s. Jamie Foxx couldn't have did that as the Django. He couldn't have pulled that off. And he was unchained. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's just a lot of good one-liners. And... Yeah, mm. he was great. And I hope he hosts again. Mm -hmm. And um, the one quibble that I have with the way they did the telecast was announcing the nominees and then doing a long bit and mm -hmm. then saying the winner. I actually kind of like that, particularly the now they didn't do it this way when the Shit's Creek gang, gang came out because right. that would have messed up the bit. But that mm -hmm. was a funny bit. It's nothing on the prompter. So is there like a tech guy or something? Maybe, but we should just open the envelope. I don't think no, we should no, just no, open no. the envelope. <laughs> they wouldn't be doing this on purpose, would they? Why would anyone want to embarrass us on the national television on purpose? I don't know. <laughs> why, why would I know? I, I, I don't know. Eugene, did you do something? <laughs> no. No, I, I didn't do anything. I may have past the writer's room this morning and asked them to lift the dialogue oh a little bit, but that's... <laughs> you that... casually told a room of comedy writers to lift your dialogue? Yeah, tighten it up a little. And, and, and what was their response? Huh? <laughs> that Where was you a find funny out bit. that Eugene Levy uh, <laughs> messed, they messed with the lighter, yeah. <laughs> he, made a, he upset the writers, so they didn't give him anything to say. Um, I, the reason I didn't like it is because if you're sitting there like, okay, they just announced I'm about to find out. And then there's this long bit. And it's like, if it's not a funny bit, you're just like, can this please end? So I can know if I'm going up or not. I just thought it was like kind of tortured to the nominees. It might've actually helped. To, I'd, I'd be interested in what the nominees say, but it might've mm -hmm. taken some of the stress out of it. Cause mm. now it's just, you're having a laugh. Right. Before yeah. you're like on pins and needles. I only thought that the one or two times where it wasn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh man, now we got to sit. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, I also like Colbert's recall election bit. That was funny. It was recalling last year's winner. <laughs> uh, but, but they actually get to keep their Emmy. I have the results of the special recall election for the 2018 Emmy. As you remember, that year, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel was duly elected. California law does allow for the recall of any Emmy award. The 2018 Emmy winner for best comedy could soon be the marvelous Mrs. Larry Elder. Mrs. Maisel has survived the recall and will remain marvelous, and it only cost California $275 million. And, and Ken Jong not being allowed in and he's got the uh what's what's it called uh, the horse deworming medicine oh uh, yeah yeah you got ivermectin yeah. on him presenting an award dude i didn't get four booster shots to present remotely you didn't upload the right credentials okay yo, in this town headshots are always the right credentials can you open up i don't know dr ken's bag and help find his vaccination card please this ivermectin isn't mine. No, it's left over from my Joe Rogan swag bag. Sorry to name drop. So humans can take, there's a human grade of ivermectin that people can take for river blindness. Still not COVID, but, <laughs> you know, at least it's not all horse to mm -hmm. one.
<laughs> you know what? I was going to go swim in that lake tomorrow without my goggles on. Was that a bad idea? Or a river? <laughs> 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 but, I, but like you, I like that actors who haven't won any support group. I thought Fred Savage yeah. coming in out of nowhere. I've been doing this since I was a kid. Right? Oh, did, did, did you start early, Jason? Because I have two nominations by the time I was 14. Zero wins. You don't bounce back. That's why I'm, I'm reduced to directing this sketch. Who is it? It's Fred Savage. The and, kid uh, from Princess Bride. That was funny. It was hilarious. And Dr. Phil's advice about, you know, get yourself <laughs> booked on Ted Lasso. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like, I've got two Emmys. Like, uh, daytime. Yeah. Let me tell you, you can put feathers on a dog and that don't make it a chicken. It makes it a very funny dog, though. Yeah. yeah, well. What do you think is the solution? Get yourself booked on Ted Lasso or The Crown. That's what you got to do. I mean, I don't really know how you feel, because I, you know, I, I do have two Emmys. What? Daytime Emmys. Oh. They're spelled with one M. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is kind of, like, ridiculous that Jason Alexander does not have an Emmy for George Costanza, just like it's very ridiculous that Steve Carell does not have an Emmy for Michael Scott. But and that's you where know. you have to audit each individual year and see what the hell happened. Cause uh, yeah. didn't James Gandolfini not win or was it Martin Sheen or both of them? I thought it was but John. It? Ha- I thought John Hamm never won for Mad Men. I mean, I could sort of understand it when it's that, but I think with um, Mike, with, with Steve Carell, it was people that you don't rem- It was people was like, okay, that was, that was a big show and all, but it 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 wasn't the office. It doesn't have the impact that the office had. Like that person was funny on that show, but not the way Steve Carell was. Like Steve Carell should have won almost all of those seasons. Well, I, I don't remember which year. I, I can't speak to it in that way without looking at the list. Yeah, I, don't who think I, I mean, I know Modern Family was on. And so there were people on that that won. And I can I can give it to them a couple of those seasons. But not not a hundred percent of the time, <laughs> you know. But we'll, well, let's uh, put an infographic up on the enhanced episode. This this episode is a really great commercial for the work you do for the YouTube. Yeah, our YouTube <laughs> ones are way better because every time I cite something, Trey puts up the source. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> YouTube.com slash there it is. Ciao. But I will say the pop talk episodes are the hardest ones to do because it's reference, 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 reference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's like my life. So give it a couple of weeks, folks, <laughs> and then you can check out this episode. <laughs> Thanks for listening, yes. though. We do appreciate it. Thanks of the show, gang. Yeah. Stan's girlfriend of the show mm-hmm. for being on. And sorry, and sorry, acquaintance of the show, Clay, that you got included in the best friend category. Like, Jason's switched medication lately, so you know. Yeah. So I just want to stress, you're not in that best friend category. You're just in the acquaintance category. Yeah, Jason mistakenly <laughs> used the horse grade. Horse grade. Yep, and I'm impotent horse now, and my balls are huge. <laughs> I'm I'm pausing like I'm Norm McDonald. <laughs> no, I so. and my balls are huge now. <laughs> Because, you know, balls. It's funny. You said balls. Yeah, Nicki Minaj's cousin had the wrong medication. It was, uh... <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Thanks so much for being on the show. Oh, Tay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are indeed a bunch of jackasses. Speaking of jackasses, don't forget to check out our video on YouTube of Conan at the Emmys. And it's on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash there it is. Be sure to like and subscribe. And we will have an enhanced version of this episode as soon as Trey can put that together with all the little details he'll have to find. <laughs> we uh, we make it hard for him. But we appreciate him doing that. Also go to thereitispod.com to find out how you can support the podcast. We have a Patreon and a PayPal. And also subscribe to our Comedy Lifestyle newsletter. And follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at There It Is Pod. Links in bio. Until next time, be good to each other.
The music for the theme song was created by Neil Brooks. The rap was written and performed by Nick Acevedo. The logo for There It Is was created by Jeff Prater. The There It Is podcast is produced by Jason Farr. Johnny Cochran put on the knit cap. Prosecutors say O.J. wore the night he committed the murder. O.J. may have heard his case when he suddenly blurted out, Hey, hey, easy with that. That's my lucky stab in half. <laughs> O.J. Simpson was asked by a reporter why he hadn't spent Mother's Day with his children. He replied, Idiot, I didn't spend Mother's Day with my kids because I killed their mother. <laughs>